A wheel rolls along a modern highway. The stainless steel wheel cover catches the sun's rays reflecting a story of safety and comfort. We may take a scene like this for granted, but what's behind it? There are six main components in a modern car. This is the story of how they began. The engine, for example. Today's high compression engines provide safe, dependable power at the slightest touch. It was a little different 50 years ago. Here's an early production car made in the United States, a 1906 Cadillac. The motor was located under the seat and was rated at 10 horsepower to speed this car along at 30 miles per hour. During this period, steam and electric cars were also popular, but they were left at the gate as the gasoline engine became the standard of the industry. It wasn't long before the power plant was moved into its present position. This four-cylinder motor in the Pierce Great Arrow has much in common with modern engines. It delivered 30 horsepower for a top speed of 45 miles per hour. Today's car will climb a steep hill with no shifting and no strain. An automatic transmission does the work. The transmission was a tough problem for early engineers. One of the first was the planetary, where bands locked on the crankshaft to transmit power. An early truck used this complicated system of friction wheels to get moving. This 1911 Mercer Raceabout had a gearbox much like modern transmissions, but was not automatic. The shifting pattern is the same used today on non-automatic transmissions. The first true automatic appeared in 1920, but it was not widely used until shortly before World War II. One major development stands out, the self-starter. It practically doubled the market for automobiles when it first appeared. Here, pictures of the first self-starter developed by C.F. Kettering and used on the 1912 Cadillac. On the 1916 Packard Twin Six, it worked like this. Pretty much the same thing used in recent years. Along with the starter, the entire electrical system underwent basic changes. A generator was added to the system, and acetylene headlamps like these, though quite bright and efficient, were replaced by more controllable and reliable electric lights. Today, remove the stainless steel wheel cover, and tires are easy to change. And today, cars can stop fast in tight spots due to four-wheel hydraulic braking system. But in 1910, Clincher rims aroused tempers across the countryside. By 1912, a removable clincher had been developed, but it was still a tough job. It was not until the 20s that drop center removable wheels became standard. This Asoto Fraschini, which cost $20,000 in 1914, boasted some of the earliest four-wheel brakes. But it was not until the 1920 Duesenberg that hydraulic brakes appeared. The chassis of the modern car is one of the least apparent developments. It's the inner skeleton which holds everything together. The early chassis were wood, the work of a carriage maker. This 1902 curved dash Olds has everything but the horse. But the modern concept came along very quickly. The 1903 Peerless had a chassis made of steel with the same arrangement of engine, transmission, drive shaft, and axle, which is standard today. This frame has been much improved through the years, but the basic idea was here. Bodies and styling are the most frequent topics of a conversation about cars. And today's models, with their stainless steel trim, are far more glamorous than the cars of 50 years ago. Many of these early cars were quite handsome, 
the body of this 1904 Knox is made entirely of wood. This Stanley steamer is pretty much of a carriage too, but it is capable of tremendous speed. Finally, the carriage theme blended with car ideas and the touring car emerged. It was popular for 20 years. This 1914 Pierce Arrow was considered one of the most handsome cars of its day. This 1931 Model A was one of the first cars to use stainless steel. The industry abandoned imitation gold-colored trim, which required excessive care, and adopted carefree stainless steel. It is one of the most important factors in car design today. Stainless moldings provide design emphasis on every new car. By 1939, the pattern of new car design emerged. Longer, lower, wider, and the extensive use of stainless steel to accentuate these new lines to the greatest advantage. And by 1940, all wood had been eliminated from car bodies. The structure was entirely steel. The public became conscious of style. Manufacturers made every effort to please them. But in 1941, war put a stop to production for five long years. In post-war years, production resumed rapidly. Styling plus performance became the keynotes of the industry. Briefly, that's the history of today's car. It's a story filled with the names of many men and many companies that made tremendous strides during a short 50 years. This brome, with its gleaming stainless steel roof, shows us how far the industry has traveled and gives us some inkling of what to expect in the future.